First of all, we've heard a lot about what you do on a daily basis, but we want to know a bit about your interests outside of village events. What do you like to do? What are your hobbies? Unfortunately, it's going to be a fairly short answer because uh, work is fairly all-consuming for us uh, at the moment. I guess I've got a young family, so uh, my, my passion is to... Uh, <laughs> changing nappies and uh, cleaning up vomit, yes, and, and tripping over toys. Um, outside of that, I, I, I love being a bit of a handyman and showing my son how to do things around the house, and I'm, I'm a passionate cricketer. Uh, so uh, I'm uh, attempting to play as much cricket as I can, which is not very much. Good answer. Yeah. Um, I'm quite a keen sportsman, so um, I'm very keen on my tennis. So I play a fair bit of tennis in and around Berry and. Uh, in the Pyama Shell Harbour Comp. Um, I'm also a keen snow skater. I work on the Fred Bowes Ski Patrol, picking people up. Um, we get to push into the front of the line and then we tell people we're actually Swiss, we're not Ski Patrol. And um, also running, so I'm a keen runner. So that's how I sort of burn off energy and wind down. Oh, there you go. So, Dobie's considering starting a TV show. So what initial advice would you guys have for us or anyone else who's hoping to get into the TV industry? The most important thing I think that we picked up was a tip that someone gave us from David Attenborough. If you ever watch a David Attenborough thing, he wears the same clothes all the time. And what he does is he just goes and he buys five of the same pants and about ten of the same shirts and just wears that all the time. So, because um, then when they ask you to reshoot something six months later, you can just go and wear the same clothes. It's very important. That's very good advice. Other than the wardrobe advice, which uh, I don't think you guys need if you look at how we dress, um, I think be prepared for uh, making up. It takes a hell of a lot of time to make a very small amount of TV. So it's very time intensive. Don't look at the camera. You're not allowed to look down the barrel of the camera, ever. Uh, and then when someone wants to take a photo, you would be weird, kind of looking away all the time. So. When, when you do those things, when we do the promo pieces and they tell us to look at the camera, we actually can't do it. I've got to get in trouble. Thank you. Um, you share your life with thousands of people watching you in front of the TV, happy as well as sad moments. How do you guys cope with that? Um, I guess our job as vets is largely explaining and communicating with people. And I think you can't be a good vet without having the ability to communicate effectively. My first boss said that to me, he said, I don't care whether you're actually any good as a vet or not. It doesn't make any difference unless you can communicate. <laughs> And, um, and, and it is true. So, so that, that, that doing, it, we're basically just living our lives. It's just that someone happens to be filming us and you just forget that someone's there. Having that played back, obviously watching things that involve you can be very sad and, and can uh, reliving that, that moment. But um, that's, that's life. We signed up for it. We can't complain about that. And it's, it, it's something that um, at the end of the day, you have some pretty precious memories. We've got one of the most expensive home movies ever made. So uh, it's, a, it's a great resource to have later in life to, to show our kids. It's still very much a novelty for us. It, it, doesn't, it hasn't really sunk in. I don't think it's... Um, we basically... Three, three people follow us around with a camera and then a television show gets made. We go down to the local pub on Thursday nights and watch it and uh, it feels like a home movie. So it's when we come away and, you know, we were driving back from Sydney yesterday and people are waving because they can see the car and you think, wow, really weird and really nice. Your car was just on fire. <laughs> <laughs> Windows were down. So do you get a lot of recognition on the streets? And very, <laughs> mainly because we treat everyone's animal and they know yeah. they it used, to, it used to take us about half an hour to go and get a coffee and it takes about an hour now. Um, no, it, 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 we live in a small town so, so everyone knows who you are and, and, and your business and I guess uh, that, that's obviously at, at a higher level than, than it was before. Um, other than that, it's quite strange, we're talking about this, if, if we're on our own, no one comes and talks to you. If we happen to go in public together, then, then, then uh, people are less shy, um, so you get, you get really nice and welcome. We, we found out that the first series there was three and a half million unique views. So that's quite a, a penetration into the market. So um, yeah, we are getting recognised and it's nice and it's, 
and it's lovely when people come up and talk to you. It's always positive. Um, currently in our Doge stores, it's cuisine month. So what would be your top two nutrition points for dogs? Nutrition is, is typically the most uh, controversial subject from a, from a veterinary point of view. And uh, uh, scientifically, in the, you can back up things in, in whatever way you choose. So it's, it's, it's a difficult field uh, to, to get too far into. Um, I guess complete and balanced diets are incredibly important and that's something that we're, we're strong advocates for. Um, feeding repeatable um, diets, so not huge variations in what you're feeding your dog because that can obviously lead to upsets. Um, we're not enormous advocates for, for raw food or, or clones because it can cause some issues and then we have to deal with those issues. So. Um, that creates the problem with the, the, if I tell you to go and feed your dog a raw bone and it chokes on it or it, it becomes obstructed in its gut and then I charge you money for taking that out, it's not exactly a good book. So uh, we're firm advocates, I guess, for, uh, for a, a, a complete and balanced diet of high quality, high quality ingredients. So, Doug has a huge range of water foster products. such a hot topic for any dog. I think um, I think what you have to work out is is your dog um, food orientated or is it toy orientated? So if you're if you've got a food orientated dog, it's a good idea to try to make their meal last a long time. So um, you can freeze things, you can hide things, you can put them in treat balls, uh, scoff balls, these these kinds of things. Try to make the dog the dog lives for food. So try to make that meal last as long as possible because the dog's enjoying itself and it's eating. Uh, if it's toy based, then just make sure that it can't chew the toys up and swallow them. Because we take a, it's probably the hardest thing to diagnose inside a dog is a spongy ball. It doesn't show up on x ray, it doesn't really show up on ultrasound. Um, and you beat your head against the wall thinking, why is the dog continually vomiting? And uh, you know, I can't see anything inside it, I can't feel anything inside it. Um, the owner has no recollection, and then when you find the little piece of green ball um, after, you know, with a major surgery, um, they realise, yeah, that was that was a toy. Yeah, in indestructibility of the toy is an important important aspect, and I guess with with those uh, boredom busting toys, um, activity balls, uh, I use a lot with my own dog, who's um, who's quite naughty, um, and and and. We've got one in particular you know, that, that the dog absolutely loves. So find you need probably a variety of toys and to find the one that the dog, the dog loves. And the one that my dog loves actually has a marble in it that won't come out. So even once he's got all the food out, he still keeps going, thinking, thinking that he might get some more. So it keeps him going for hours at a time. It's pretty, it, it works brilliantly for him. Okay, thanks James and Anthony. That's all we have. Very good tips and advice. Now our questions for you. <laughs> Kidding. <laughs> um, that's all we had, so thank you. Enjoy the rest of your day. And that video and interview will be found on our website, www.do.com.au. <laughs> thanks, thanks for having us up, guys. It's a, you guys are doing a great job, and it's a wonderful product, and uh, we're very much behind it. Thank you. Thank you.